Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 28, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. To start out with today, we have a Mac OS vulnerability and it was discovered by Filippo Cavallari and does result in a bypass of Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is a tool that was introduced by Apple in order to flag any downloads as suspicious and the user typically has to acknowledge that the file was downloaded before it's being executed. The trick that Filippo found could lead to an attacker sending a remote file to a victim that will then execute the file without gatekeeper interfering. It's actually a pretty simple. The way it would start out with is that the attacker would send a zip file to the victim. The victim then opens the zip file and within the zip file there is a symbolic link. Now this symbolic link does point to a special path within Mac OS that points to a network share that the attacker set up. Now, this doesn't have to be just SMB, could be NFS and the like, and Gatekeeper does consider network shares as safe. So Gatekeeper does not warn the user, in this case, of downloaded files, but uh, these network shares will be mounted automatically. As soon as the user clicks on the link, that directs them uh, to a path that does imply a network drive. So overall, a pretty neat trick, and I think uh, the root problem here is that network shares are considered safe, and that's not necessarily easily fixed, because uh, network shares, of course, uh, happen, they exist in companies all over the place, and if you would mark all files on network shares as unsafe, that, of course, uh, would be quite disruptive to users in these scenarios. Maybe a compromise would be to only mark new network shares as unsafe and then ask the user whether or not they actually would like to connect to them instead of automatically connecting to these network shares. Overall, it reminds me a little bit of some of the problems that we had with, for example, SMB links automatically resolving on Windows. And if you're using Fortinet, uh, well, it's time for you to update if you are taking advantage of the SSL VPN feature. One vulnerability being patched is an authorization vulnerability. It does allow an unauthenticated attacker to change the passwords of an SSL VPN portal user. Then there's a second vulnerability that allows an attacker without authentication to read arbitrary files from the 40 OS operating system. And then we also have two cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, one in the web portal error pages, and then we also have one that actually doesn't even require authentication. To me, the unauthenticated SLVPN user password modification does sound the most severe one here. Doesn't really explain uh, how it's exactly being triggered other than stating that it is triggered by specially crafted HTTP requests. And Didi used the long weekend to post a couple of diaries about the good old tool Nmap and how to customize the service detection in Nmap. Nmap, of course, has a good list of fingerprints in order to identify not just operating systems, but also different services running on systems. But quite frequently, there is no specific signature for a service that you're running in particular if you are customizing them. So DDA goes over how to customize some of the detection rules and fingerprints and also how to submit updated fingerprints to Nmap. 
And just a quick update on the RDP Blue Keep vulnerability, of course. So, well, uh, the weekend has been pretty quiet as far as this vulnerability goes. No real uh, big news here. Yes, uh, plenty of scanning for vulnerable systems, but uh, these scans just use any of the available scanners. Now, talking about these scanners, there is some word out there that there may be some fake scanners that are actually backdooring systems that they are being run on. So be careful where you are downloading your scanners from. And well, uh, that's it for today. And don't forget, it's less than a month to Sans Fire. If you ever want to meet uh, some of our handlers, Sans Fire is the place where we try to assemble as many of them as we can. Starts June 15th in Washington, D.C. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.